Shooting fans, welcome to our first episode of The Science of Shooting. I'm Pro Shot Director Matt Williamson, and together, you and I are going to put shooting theories to the test. I don't think there's many people out there that have the, the perfect shot. Ten toes to the rim, elbows lined up to the rim, because I know I don't, man. Mm -hmm. A lot of times my my right foot is in front of my left foot. You know, my body's kind of turned, and uh, you know, I think it's just you know, locking in on the rim. If I've heard it once, I've heard it a hundred times. Perfect shooting form. Practice makes perfect. What is this perfect shooting form? Does practice really make perfect? Or is this all just a hoax? On this episode of Finding Bigfoot. Whoa, whoa, whoa. Hold on. Hold the mayo. Let's refocus. So let's highlight some of the greats. Guys that we might consider finalists for the Mount Rushmore shooting if there were such a thing. Let's take into consideration Stephen Curry's jump shot, Reggie Miller's jump shot, Ray Allen's jump shot, and Larry Bird's jump shot. The feeling of the perfect shot feels effortless to me. Right when I release that shot, it just feels serene and quiet. It's only me in the rim and the basketball. I really like this statement by Steph, until the point that he uses the word perfect. Perfect implies that there's one set way and that all others are wrong. When in fact, it's just the opposite. All the ways that we shoot are wrong because there is no perfect way. If there was a perfect way, then a player would make every shot and there would be no, no question as to, to whether they're right or wrong. But what we want to look at here is um, the fact that he talks about it's just him and the ball, that it feels effortless, okay? And that's true. I, I really like that. I think that when we talk about this statement by Steph, it doesn't define a perfect shot, it defines an efficient shot. Because the one thing we have to come to accept is that when shooting, there is no perfection. You're just efficient or you're inefficient. And there's a lot of area there in between. Um, so the way that we have to look at this is there are a lot of wrong ways to shoot a ball. Obviously, if you're going to shoot towards a basket, you don't turn around and shoot the opposite way. So there are ways... To, that are wrong to shoot a ball because you're not going to have any luck doing it um, that way no matter how many times you shoot. But what we have to define here is that when you shoot and you use efficient techniques, there's always going to be efficient inefficiency somewhere. We just have to find as many efficient techniques as we can possibly find to shoot the ball and that's going to help us improve our percentage. No one has ever shot 100% from the field. And I don't think we'll ever find a way to shoot 100% from the field. Shooting for me is not about my upper body. It's really about my lower body. So when I'm shooting the ball like I need to, I jump in this one motion. And I always know why I missed it. Short legs, long, I'm aiming it. I always can tell right away. You got to be able to turn your body and your feet at the same time and still come to your shot and be going up as if you were standing there. But being right eye dominant, if I'm coming this way, all I have to do is see the basket from right here and I can shoot it from like that. I don't have to turn all the way this way. If all, if all those things are equal, then the guy that's guarding me is in for a long night. The thing I believe we can take away from this Ray Allen statement is that every player has a different focus. Every player has a different weakness or a different flaw that they must concentrate on in practice and try to find a more efficient way to work it out and, and get a better percentage or a better feel out of their shot. You know, I've talked to some players that um, 
they, they don't believe in the whole going out and shooting thousands of shots every day in the off season to get better. They just they make a they make a commitment to go out and just shoot until it feels good. And if they go out and they shoot and it feels good from the moment they get in the gym, they're just going to put up a couple hundred shots. But if they go out and they shoot and it doesn't feel good, they're going to try to figure out why it doesn't feel good and what the correction they need to make is for it to feel good, for it to feel more efficient and more effortless. Hey, when you shoot, you look at the rim the whole time or you look at the ball as it's going? Kev, Kevin and the dirt. When they shoot it, they don't see the rim, then when they let it go, they look at the ball. Great question asked by Andre Iguodala. That same question was asked to me by Joe Dumas. I always follow the path of the ball. I glance at the rim and then always follow the path of the ball. Yeah, did you, did you ever even think about it when you were growing up? No, I, I always just followed the path of the ball. That's what I thought I was supposed me, to be doing. Me too. I was, I was a ball guy. I, I think it's just sort of something to do with your natural vision. And, and it, it's, a, it's an instinct. You don't even think about it. An interesting discussion here between Steve Kerr and Reggie Miller. You know, I was always taught to only see the rim when I shoot. And it's funny that um, as I became older and as I developed as a shooter and became a lot better, I noticed myself not just seeing the rim, but also having a natural tendency to want to watch the flight of the ball and watch my release and make sure that everything not only felt good, but looked good. Um, one thing that I think we can relate science-wise to this is that it gives you feedback. It gives you that natural feedback in your shot that lets you see, okay, what did I do wrong? Did I do everything right? You know, is the ball going straight? Um, so one of the things that we at ProShot support is actually watching not just the rim, but you identify where the rim's at, and then just as you release or just after you release, you have to get feedback. You have to create awareness in your shot. So you're going to look at the flight of the ball and look at the release to make sure they're efficient and they work well. Um, between Reggie Miller and Steve Kerr here, you know, they mentioned that it was just part of their natural vision. Well, an, a, a good shooter should do things that are very natural. You shouldn't have any mechanical, robotic type stuff in the shot. Um, we want to be efficient. The human body is is made to try to do things more efficiently than than we may believe. So when we look at are you efficient or are you, or are you inefficient, you're never going to get to that perfect form. You're never going to get to that perfect stage where you're making every shot. But we can be highly, highly efficient. And the way to do that is to get everything working together and get the feedback that you need to be a great shooter. What goes through your mind? Well, the first thing is to get my eyes focused on the front of the rim. The second thing is to get in the position where I feel most comfortable at. And the third thing is, is to get my hand situated on the ball, which feels best to me. And usually I use the seams as a guide. The fourth thing is, I just get my feet set, get down in the position, follow through with my arm. Go up with the right, shot. Again, Larry Bird, great shooter. And you'll notice that he has some tips that are a little bit different than some of these other guys' tips that we've heard. And I think when you look at these players, the tips that you're going to get from them are maybe things that they struggled with, maybe things that they had to focus a little harder on to make them the great shooters that they were. They were, they were good from the beginning, and, and there were a lot of different reasons for that um, because you have to start with mechanics. Uh, and maybe I don't want to use that word because... Uh, you know, we at ProShot have talked about how we don't like the word mechanics because mechanics would imply that we're robots, um, that we're very structured movements, and we don't want structured movements. We want the human body to be natural. We want the human body to be relaxed when we shoot. So we don't want to be mechanical in our shot. So we want to talk about um, how it not starts with not mechanics, but form and technique. And we've got to get the form and technique to be as efficient as possible. And a lot of times when you hear these guys talk, they're going to talk about things that maybe they struggled with a little bit from time to time. Maybe they felt was, was kind of their flaws in their shot. And so they have to concentrate or focus a little harder on those flaws to make sure that everything's doing what it's supposed to do. You don't have time to celebrate. Curry and Thompson, three-pointer. Jordan, Wayne Gretzky, amongst many others. Here's Allen for three. Yes! This game has been
Hoffman nodded up. Bird, a wide open. So the basic science behind having a perfect or not perfect shot is basically that it doesn't exist. You either have an efficient shot or an inefficient shot. I view this as kind of like if you're looking at a map. You have a starting point and an ending point. Just like with the shot. You have a starting point, whether you're off the catch or the dribble, and you have an ending point, which is preferably the ball going through the net. So you have a point A and a point B, just like on a map. And the most efficient way to get from point A to point B is a straight line. But you're not always faced with an option of having a straight path between point A and point B. Much like shooters always have flaws, so they don't always have a straight path from point A to point B in their shot. You're going to get players with inefficient shots who have a lot of different little turns and back roads and all that stuff in their shot that you've got to kind of direct them around and try to find a little more efficient way um, for them to get from point A to point B and not taking so much the scenic route, as I would call it. And then you have the players who um, they have a point A and a point B and they're going to go straight to the interstate and get there as quickly as possible. Um, when we look at those four shooters that we had before, Reggie Miller has a very unorthodox uh, form. Um, even though we say that, he still did a lot of things that, that were efficient in his shot. Uh, you look at Stephen Curry. When Stephen Curry shoots, it's very efficient because it almost looks effortless when he shoots. Um, and then you look at Larry Bird. Everybody knows Larry Bird had a hitch in his shot, but he was still able to be a great shooter because he started at point A and he finished at point B. Um, the stuff in between, uh, he was able to to make his own. He was able to be comfortable with, with the things that were going wrong and able to compensate for it. But um, we always start at point A and we want to finish at point B. And the question is, are you efficient at getting from point A to point B? So there we have it. There's no such thing as perfect shooting form. You're either efficient or you're inefficient. The goal here is, is even though there is no perfect shooting form, that doesn't mean we can't strive for it. We always have to find ways to be more and more efficient. Um, every time we go out and practice, does it feel good? Are we getting good feedback? Are we correcting things that need to be corrected? Um, it's just those little tiny things that can take us to the next level and take us to a little bit higher percentage um, each time we go out and practice. Well, that's it, guys. Thanks for joining me on the first episode of The Science of Shooting. We have many more great videos to come. Uh, next month's video will be tools versus gimmicks and whether the things that you're using in practice are tools that help you succeed or gimmicks that, that may cause you to, to hit a, some barriers along the way. Uh, we hope you'll subscribe, so definitely click below to subscribe to our channel so that you get alerts whenever a new video comes out. And uh, Coach Hoover and I will be back with you shortly.